Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm the CEO of Wayne Photonics. And I'm, I'd like to start by asking a pretty general question, which is, how do robots see the world around them? So you think, well, this is a vision conference, right? They use cameras kind of like our eyes. They just take a picture of the world and process that. Um, but if you look at the highest performance, most advanced robots we've built, actually they use an entire suite of sensors. So things like self-driving cars or these humanoid robots from Boston Dynamics. And at the core of those sensor suites is a technology called LiDAR. Here, I'll, I'll point out a few. There's five on each of these cars. There's one on top of the Boston Dynamics <laughs> robot. Um, and so this LiDAR builds a detailed 3D map of the world. It's a laser-based sensor that actually sees in three dimensions instead of two. Um, and so when you, you do this, you get these very detailed point clouds of LiDAR, something that looks like this. Um, so this is, color here is distance, and you can see in very great detail, actually three dimensions, you can see people and cars, and so for an autonomous driving application, this is where you see someone walking in the street and, and differentiate them from a driver. And the resolution here is really crazy. I was kind of curious, so I paced out this auditorium before my talk. So if I had a LiDAR here sitting at the, on the stage, at the very back row, I could resolve about an eighth of an inch in every dimension. So I could 3D map someone's face in pretty good detail, even at this great distance. Um, and so not only autonomous driving, but this gets used in aerial surveying. Uh, so here, pretty recently, people discovered some Mayan ruins uh, looking through uh, tree cover and just flying a plane over, over the area, or um, perhaps the 3D rendering of Notre Dame, that they're taking this point cloud to try to rebuild it. Um, and so how does all this work? I mentioned it's a laser-based sensor, but really, it takes, you take a laser, you point it at something, you send out a laser beam, it hits the object, it comes back at you, um, and then you measure the time that it took to travel. Uh, so you have some very high-speed electronics to measure this, this very fast time, because light moves really, really fast. Um, and then you want to build up an image, you don't just want one point. And so the traditional way to do this is to take the laser and mount it on a motor and spin it around 10 or 20 times a second. Uh, so the, all these LIDARs that I sh showed earlier, they are just the, these big spinning units. Um, and this works great, except um, if you're an engineer, you say, well, I have a very precise optical system um, with a lot of high-speed electronics that requires a lot of precise alignment, and then I'm going to spin it around and then put it on top of a car where it gets bounced around. Um, so these are re actually really expensive and really unreliable sensors right now. Um, so LiDAR today, complex assembly, about the size of a softball, weighs about a pound and costs $4,000 up to well past $100,000 depending on the performance. So my question is, what if we took this $10,000 softball and put it on a fingertip? Uh, so here at Voyant Photonics, we are developing chip-scale LiDAR sensors uh, based in silicon processes. So this is one of our early prototypes on my co-founder's finger. Um, and so this sensor is the entire LiDAR sensor that I showed you before, that entire softball now on a square centimeter piece of silicon. Um, and so these are, are fabricated wafer level and contract assembly kind of in, in standard computer chip foundries, but they're optical chips, not electronics. Um, and we can leverage that whole infrastructure to make these um, really by the millions. Um, and so this gets really interesting because it's not just that we can now build a much more robust, much smaller LiDAR sensor. Um, it's that you can think, now that you can make LiDAR this tiny, um, what, is, what kind of applications this is open up? And if you look at a image sensor, what really made those go everywhere is that they became small and inexpensive. Um, and so now that you can make LiDAR small and inexpensive, you can think of what other applications can we put it into? Can we put it in the tip of a robot arm? Can we fly it on a drone? Because now we're about you know, 20, 30 grams for an entire LiDAR sensor. Um, can we put it in augmented reality goggles? Can we do precision surgery? Can we put it in our cell phones and give someone who actually has, and give someone a really detailed 3D map just by pointing their cell phone camera at something? Um, and so I'm, I'm, we're really fascinated to explore where this goes. Thanks for your time.